<laughs> yes, any FAQ that you'd like to find out more? Um, Lian, maybe you can stop sharing the screen and then everyone oh. can, yeah. Okay, sorry, sorry, yeah. Okay, okay so let me stop. So now we are moving on to, yeah, thank you so the much question. for the very uh, inspiring presentation. YC will take over to gather us for the Q&A session. Yes, uh, we have um, quite a number of questions. Uh, I'll look at the higher rank one. Um, how can we actually best spread the love of mushroom to educational institutions and urban societies? Okay. This is what we're going to achieve, hopefully by this year. We are working with a MOE institution um, soon to start a fungi movement. We have a lot of people going green. Huh? Let's us start a fungi movement. And um, fungi is also a, a highly gelatin-free protein supplement huh? that um, you, can, you can take at uh, what quantity you like. Okay, and um, education is one of them. Um, why? Because if you want to promote mushroom growing commercially in Singapore, you need to have a trained pool of grower. Am I right to say that? Yes. Uh, so we need to start, uh, develop a, a, a steady pool of talent, grower, to, to match up to the, 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 the needs of the industry. And hopefully the grower will become the boss of themselves. Right? Uh, so education is going to be uh, one of the essential components. Okay? And when more people are educated on how to grow mushroom, and then the love of the fungi friend will be greater. And that is where our vision is, how to grow mushroom at home. Very simple statement, but if I, idealistically speaking, if every home were to grow their, grow their own mushroom, which is good enough to, to sustain themselves, then we, we actually help to save a lot on food, uh, food security as well. Right, just like the vegetables. Do I take on the next question myself? Uh, yeah, sure. Know? It's okay. actually on the list, you know. Okay, what is the biggest challenge that you had when setting up a mushroom world and how did they... Oh, okay. Challenges. Uh. Challenges, I always look at the positive challenges. Uh. Try not to think too much about the negative. Uh. You know my staff... Okay, just to share with you. You know my staff in Thailand? I tell you, yes. Uh, when, when I speak to the staff first time, when I say, that, hey, I want to do this. No, no, sir, you cannot do this. Well, I get very upset. When I hear the word no, I say, you stop. Don't tell me no, tell me how. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and from, from there after, she will never say no. She will say, okay, uh, we see how we can do it. All right. <laughs> Challenges, plenty. All right, a plenty. Let me share with you a specific challenges. Uh. Phuket uh, will have no water for a certain period of time. Because Phuket summer uh, is very hot. And when they are hot, uh, rain don't come, uh, that's it. And I encountered that last year. What? So, but fortunately, uh, we have truck that sell water. Okay, so these are one challenges. Second challenges in Phuket, power supply. A certain period of time, in a certain season, you have power supply disruption. Okay? And other form of challenges, I would say is the just bit and pieces, which I can easily overcome. But anything that is no rain, can uh, you buy water. No power unless you have off grid solar power, otherwise, you can't do much. Okay. So, what do you think of the Kenyan Agritech, the mushroom grower in Singapore? Uh, okay, what do you think of that? I think they are doing a good job because they're introducing mushroom already in, in Singapore. So, nothing alien. So, the, apart from the local supply, we do have uh, supply coming from uh, overseas. The common one we see will be portobello, the button mushroom, 
and then uh, occasionally you see this um, this one little piece by Ling, uh, just a single flower mushroom, but the taste it tastes like abalone. But I'm not sure why they call it by Ling. and and they do sell back. I think a lot of uh, uh, people has actually bought back from them. So when you buy the bags from them, um, I'm not sure whether it's in carton box, but if it's not in carton box, you just make sure that the surface of the bag are all pure white. Okay? You don't, it has, if you were to see any funny color or, mark, or rainbow color, then most probably the bag is, is, is already contaminated. And if it's in the carton box form, I would suggest um, take it out. Uh, why? Because when you're going to water them, so to speak, if you water too much, the carton box will be uh, will absorb the water moisture, and then that will start the cycle of contamination. And when that happens, most of the time, Canon will get asked why your bag doesn't last. Bag doesn't last have many possibilities. Yeah? Okay? So, mo but the most possibility is normally how you take care of the bags. So, touch going, I mean, let me speak a bit about taking care of the bags. Do not water the bag. Uh, uh, do not water the mushroom because mushroom is not vegetables. Uh. They, in fact, are the opposite of vegetables. So, they, they, they don't need direct watering. They just need moisture in the air. So, you just miss above and then, and then they will know what to do. Uh. So, don't go and spray directly into the opening and then expect them to grow like a flower. Instead, uh, you'll grow bacteria. If that, if that is what the protein you're looking for. Otherwise, uh, don't do that. All right? Don't do that. And it's good, no? You see, in order to create awareness, I always believe in competition. Competition create awareness. Yes, it's a competition. But if you do it differently, you become the leader of the competition, right? So competition create um, awareness and then eventually more people will start to love mushroom. Right? It can't be mushroom world, mushroom world alone. It's not possible. Okay, what's the next one? Uh, what is the biggest challenge that you had when setting up a... Uh, that's the, the same question as before. Oh, okay. So there's actually one more question on uh, the commercial potential for mushroom in uh, Thailand and the region. Do you see the, the market potentials? You know? Oh, the market uh, the potential one, uh, in Thailand, is it? Yes, that's right. Okay. Uh, talking about that, we use figures. Uh. Thailand have a population of 70 million. We have a population of about 5, point, 5, 5 over million, coming close to 6. And having said that, Taking us for example, our approach is that we're going to sell edible mushroom. I'm not sure if you saw some of my posts. I actually become a salesman, uh, which is quite normal to me. Uh. At the end of the farm work, I will still have to sell mushroom outside the farm. So I just stand there, lay long, lay long. Uh. So about one, two hours, everything gone. So as far as I know, the demand of mushroom in pocket is always very high. So supply is always shortage. And not only that, they import from another city, Pana. So by the time you talk about importation, the freshness will, be, will drop. So the, um, we give them the value for money. Okay? And, and on that sense, on that note, the um, edible mushroom that we are growing right now in Phuket has huge potential. 